In the easternmost parts of Indonesia, an independence struggle has been rumbling on for decades, largely unnoticed by the rest of the world. Papua officially became part of Indonesia in 1969 after a controversial and very limited vote. Since then, there have been calls for independence from the government in Jakarta. Foreign journalists are restricted from working in Papua, but Newsnight has obtained rare footage of independence fighters based deep in the Papuan jungle. The man who filmed the pictures has asked to remain anonymous to protect those who helped him. Rachel Harvey, the BBC's correspondent in Indonesia until 2006, reports. Papua's freedom fighters. This is 2,000 miles from the Indonesian government in Jakarta, Culturally, it feels even further. We are ready to fight Indonesia and to die for our land. Papua is a land of mountains and jungle, roughly the size of Spain. For decades, a low-level battle for independence has been waged here. few foreigners venture beyond the main towns. This remote highland outpost is Wamina. These pictures were filmed by a British man keen to document the independence struggle. From here, he travelled undercover, aided by local activists and without the permission of the Indonesian authorities. It took nine hours by car and a further 16 hours trekking through the jungle to reach the stronghold of the Free Papua Movement rebels. From one hilltop to another, a smoke signal confirms the approach of friends, not foe. Misunderstandings could be fatal. The greeting rhythmically reinforced. The response a distant gunshot. Permission granted. The camp's reception committee. But they aren't here just to welcome strangers. The real focus of all this excitement is the appearance of another honoured guest. The rebel commander, General Goliath Tabuni. This is my land. Our ancestors gave us this land. We want independence. Indonesia has stolen our land from us. How long have we been suffering in the jungle? How many people have died? There are just so few of us now. The roots of the struggle run deep. Papuans don't look like other Indonesians, they're Melanesian, ethnically closer to Aboriginals than Asians. Their integration into the wider archipelago in the 1960s was controversial. There has always been opposition to it, but the violent resistance is increasingly fragmented and poorly armed. Its power lies as much in its symbolism as it does in its ability to wage war. Many Papuans feel their culture and identity is slowly being eroded. <laughs> Migrants from other Indonesian islands now make up about half the local population, and some of those incomers consider the traditional Papuan way of life backward and uncivilized. Layers of grievance have built up over the decades. We've had enough. Indonesia has committed crimes, killing people and other human rights abuses. But we're suffering and it will be over for us, just like what happened to the Aborigines. 
Federal lah segalanya. Future fears lamented. What will we do when our husbands have all been killed, sing the women in the rebel camp. Over the years, there have been serious abuses committed by the Indonesian security forces, and the police and military are in Papua in large numbers. The Indonesian security forces are always looking for us, for anyone talking about independence. We have to keep running away. When we go back to our farmland, sometimes they are still hiding there. They arrest us and sometimes rape the girls. It makes it very difficult for us. So now we stay in hiding. The Indonesian security forces are being reformed, but the legacy of past behaviour will take time to erase. The military posts are well within view, nestling in the valley. And as long as the independence fighters are here, so will the soldiers be. The army's mission, not just to root out the rebels, but also to protect vital business interests. Papua is rich in natural resources. It's home to the world's largest gold and copper mine. There's gas, timber and palm oil. A blessing for some, a curse for others. We believe it's about morality. Because the world is interested in our resources, they won't talk about us. Because of the oil in Sarong, BP in Batuni, and the gold and copper, that's why the world just ignores us and our struggle. Hard to ignore this. Passionate defiance, proud traditions. Clans gather to mark Papua's self-declared Independence Day. Now is the time to get our sovereignty back, he says. In towns and villages, all Papuans must unite. This ceremony is usually conducted in secret. Few outsiders have seen it, let alone filmed it. Since I was a young boy, I've been thinking and dreaming of independence. Independence is our right to be free. We raise our flag. We love our flag. This is a symbol of our nation. There is no more potent image of national aspiration than a flag. <laughs> It's illegal to raise the morning star. This is a very deliberate, very formal act of defiance. Papua has been granted a degree of autonomy from the central government in Jakarta, but its implementation has been patchy. And for the free Papua movement, anything short of full statehood will never be enough. We raised our flag. No one sees us in the jungle. But one day we know we will be free. Anger at the state displayed in an act now universally understood. The red and white flag of Indonesia first torn and then burned. While the Papuan flag flies free. This is what happens when that act of defiance is moved into a public space. A rally in a district of the provincial capital Jayapura, with the police looking on. Yusak Pukaje, seen here in the stripy shirt, was later arrested and charged with treason. He's currently serving a 10-year jail sentence and is considered by Amnesty International to be a prisoner of conscience. I'm Yusuf Pakage. Now I'm staying in the Habibura Hospital. And uh, I come uh, of uh, Indonesian prison in Habibura.
This interview was recorded in secret during a hospital visit. I, 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 I myself, I was, was praying pray to God. Yeah, every day I was, to, was praying to God. USAC's case and others like it are raising the profile of the Papuan cause. This makeshift camp in Jayapura was set up by activists to highlight cases of alleged abuse committed by the police. The authorities tore it down days after these pictures were filmed. Peaceful protests are another crucial part of the broader political struggle. And in terms of garnering international support, they're probably more effective than the armed rebellion. But there's no sign that independence is any closer. And that's still the dream the rebel fighters are striving for. My ancestors were strong, but now I'm weak. We need the world to help us. Don't talk about autonomy. We need independence. <laughs>